What the hell do we know? Let's just freaking rip the cord. Let's rip. <laughs> All right. Tres, dos. Welcome to Crosstown Cardboard episode 75, and we are very excited about this episode. We're calling it Full Steam Ahead, which of course Craig came up with and will later explain. But we're excited because we've been pent up with all these great personal hobby stories that we've had. You know, three straight episodes, if you've been following along, thank you for, you know, lending us an ear or a couple eyeballs, you know, for the YouTube uh, version. And you've heard us talk about our time at Culture Collision. We had a part one, we had a part two, we had a big part with Big Ken, that was part three, all talking about the pickups and what it was like setting up as a dealer and if it makes sense to travel to these shows. So we've just been getting active as, you know, in reference to uh, one of our previous episodes, we've been getting busy. And basically that's what we've been doing. We have some pent up sports card stories to let loose. And Craig, can you please explain the full steam ahead uh, mantra for this episode that you that you did before we started recording? Well, as you referenced the our previous episode, we've been getting busy. It's more or less the same theme, but full steam ahead because we just came from a show. The Nationals not that far away. Five months. I feel like the hobby vibes for us at least are good right now. Having fun. Plenty of good stories. A lot of transacting. So it's just full steam ahead, you know, (laughs) choo-choo. That's right. That's right. So basically it's going to be, like you said, you know, Craig, as well, like random, you know, sports stories that we got a kick out of in the past, uh, you know, two, three weeks while we've been getting busy, but behind the scenes, including some tickets that I picked up, a card that I picked up that you also have, and we'll see just how much we can... Uh, get into but you know of course we have plenty of episodes the airwaves there's no uh google drive we're filling up we're not worried about taking up any airspace so what do you want to start off with craig as far as uh this full steam ahead okay i do want to preface this by saying this time last year i you know part i'm a teacher right but my side hustles i do tutoring for math i do private coaching for soccer and this time last year i was doing three sessions a week just busy you know Kids want that additional practice to perfect Mm -hmm. their craft, so I help them out. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, This year, for no particular reason other than just like life happens, people have other priorities, I haven't had as many sessions as I did last year. So with that that free time, I'm able to participate in cars and the hobby more. So I'm definitely transact. It's giving me more time to transact. And also from a business side, it's it's a way for me to make a little cash, whether it's for personal expenses or to reinvest it back into hobby. And I, and I basically do a little bit of both. Do you feel any added pressure to actually make up that fi- financial difference? No. Or, I mean, you're good. You're good either way. That was a bonus, right? Yeah, exactly. So it's oh, uh, okay. extra. Just oh, that's I, I like to keep myself busy. I'm not one that likes to just sit around and do nothing. So if I got free time, I like to spend it being productive. Right, right. And card collecting and card flipping is a good way to do that. Sure. Since we last spoke about our own instances, I had another, uh, I shouldn't say run-in, scheduled meeting with my friend Andrew, who's the teacher, also (laughs) soccer coach, who works at a school in New York City, 15 blocks from mine. Yep. So he had a bunch of inventory, he had picked up a big collection, and I met him, it took me 15 minutes to walk there, met him in front of the school, we walk up to his classroom, 45 minutes to an hour, we're just hanging out, talking, catching up on life, and playing with some cards. Right. So he shows me a bunch of his inventory. He's got a lot of cards in his class, which I think is really cool. Mm-hmm. And he spends, you know, time during his day looking at cards, making deals, watching content, which kind of normalizes it for me because I do the same. But <laughs> I, I picked up a, a big lot of stuff and with the idea of, all right, maybe I'll sell this piece here, sell this piece there and end up having some stuff that I really like. So the biggest takeaway as far as a personal collection card, did you see this next booklet that oh. I got? Yes, you showed me. Remember, you asked me to guess how much you paid for it. Uh, all that true. stuff. True, true, true. But yeah. anyway, uh, Nick's seven way booklet all stars. So, all stars Charles Oakley, Mark Stoudemire, John Starks, Mark Jackson, Ewing, LJ, Earl Monroe. So, that's sweet. That's great. That's such a great <laughs> card for what, what was the value of that in the trade? I think we had internet. said 50, but I f- and flipped my way, like selling the other stuff to the point where I'm basically into this for nothing. 
But how good of a card is that for fifty dollars? I oh mean, my God, the coolest. <laughs> I mean, come on. But uh, another part of that story is I was able to create a few new connections and sell some cards that people really like. Like Andrew had a bunch of Jameer Nelson cards. And mm-hmm. I got them because it was immaculate patch autographs, really nice patches from the Magic. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, these are cool. This is my style. So I posted everything online. And Erica, our good friend, love what you collect. Yep. I found out that she actually has a personal connection with Jameer Nelson from uh, from where they grew up. So okay. she bought one of the Jameer Nelson cards from me. There was another person on Instagram who reached out. He's a Jameer Nelson collector. So I had a few other to sell to him as well. So I got to hang out with my guy, Andrew. I picked up a cool Knicks PC card. I flipped some stuff to people who really collect those players. And it was just a good, fun, healthy transaction. Wow. That's uh, very surprising. Jameer Nelson with uh, right. a couple of people with personal connections to their personal collections through Jameer Nelson, St. John's finest. Come on. St. Joe's. Oh, I'm sorry. Ooh, I don't want to get, I don't want to get, uh, get mixed up with Chris Mullen. Yeah. Wrong okay. St. Joe's St. Joe's. So uh, apologies to Jameer Nelson. Apologies to Carl Anthony towns. I still feel like he, you know, feels all so listeners, scared. all listeners yeah. though. It's best you, you apologize. <laughs> yes. So, all right. As you know, I've been going with these tickets. And I, I got a few ticket pickups. Um, three since the last time we spoke. So I'm on Facebook Marketplace. And as we've established in the last episode, Big Ken, I'm Big News, Craig's Big City. And everyone knows there's a big woman supporting every big guy in the hobby. <laughs> Don't shake your head. You, you lost me with that one last episode as well. All I'm saying is the girl who I'm talking to right now, she assisted me by pointing out these tickets on Facebook Marketplace. And it's oh. two tickets to Clemson football's first ever national championship win. 1982, Craig, the Orange Bowl. And a guy on Facebook Marketplace was selling these two tickets. Now, these rarely come up if you look on eBay. Like, I think there's one on eBay right now. And, but they sell for about $75 each. I mean, you could see it's ripped because somebody used it to enter the Orange Bowl. But I just think that's the coolest thing. You know, if you you have a, a connection to Clemson like I do supporting Clemson Tigers gymnastics with my crew neck sweater here in their inaugural season, then how can you not want to get their first national championship? And it nicely matches the one that I've also talked about, my first ever ticket, the 2019 Clemson football national championship with the 44-16 win over Alabama a few years later, forcing Nick Saban's retirement, as we now know. So now I got two out of the three. Clemson football national championship titles. I just need the 2017 uh, national championship win, which was the 2016 football season. And then I'll have all three for uh, for $200 for the 2019 ticket. And then I paid, I got a bunch of other cool Clemson tickets that, you know, to random games that I just thought were cool. And then the two championship tickets and I paid a hundred bucks total. So are you going to grade those? I think I should. I don't yeah. I don't think there are many graded. They do look good in the slab. It's just a little more oh, secure. Yeah. It holds and presents well in the slab. Right, right. So you know what I could do is keep one and sell one. I you agree. Had that. So we'll see. Whichever one is the highest graded, I probably keep. Now that you're a ticket guy, a certified ticket guy, have you had Wait, who, who, who did that certification come from? Is that just you being a good friend? Yeah. Okay. P- PSA certified ticket guy. Uh, okay. Have you had any luck or even tried selling? Because I've seen you buying tickets, just like you buy yeah. cards, but you sell cards. Have you tried selling tickets? Uh, the only ticket that I've sold, which is I'm really happy you brought up because that brings up another story of people who are interested in tickets. And I'm slowly finding this out. Again, if you've been following along, I've been getting into the ticket market uh, for you know like a month and a half or, or around there. And what I've found out is the passion for the collecting in the ticket market is like the main thing. Like in, in cards, that passion is there, but so is the financial, the selling, 
the value of each thing, um, which of course, you know, the value is important in tickets too, but it's like the passion for the sports history that I found through tickets and respect for such enjoyable moments during sports is, is absolutely insane. I'll give you an example of a guy who I've been talking to on Instagram, making these friends, just entering the ticket space and people seeing, Oh, you post this ticket. You know, I have this one. What, what do you collect? This guy had the only ever graded ticket in any grade from Vince Carter's dunk of death on the French guy in the Olympics when he jumped over and went through his legs, punched it on him. Kevin Garnett was going insane. He almost punched Kevin Garnett in the face with his reaction. And so, like, what is that worth? That's another very interesting part of this hobby that I'm slowly starting to learn that I've been wanting to talk about through our culture collision recaps is like, what is that worth? <laughs> it's the only graded yeah. ticket from that game. So I'm like, what is that worth? And the guy's like, I'm asking between three and five K for that. And I'm like, for me personally, that's not what I want to spend three to $5,000 on, but who's to say it's not worth that to somebody who, you know, really loved USA basketball or is a dunk moment collector or a, Vin or a Vince Carter fan. Listen, you know I mean? someone, someone out there is a, their PC is ticket to games of notable dunks. So right next that's to that, awesome. and that's an awesome PC. <laughs> <laughs> right next to the Vince Carter ticket is the uh, yeah. DeAndre Jordan dunk ticket. Okay. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a valid question. Just like cards, what's anything worth? You know, if yeah. you have a couple of Vince Carter collectors who really like it, I don't know. Three thousand right. seems absolutely crazy to me, but right. what do I know? Right. And that's the another interesting element of the ticket market is like. How do you place these values on on these tickets? Um, Let the market decide. Yeah, I guess so. So the only one that I've tried to sell, even attempted to sell, is the Magic Johnson 1992 NBA All-Star game okay. that you know we already talked about on the Culture Collision recap, but it was, was autographed by – That was a W. Magic. Yeah, that was a W because I bought it for 300 sold it for 400 But that was the only ticket that I brought to try and sell at – um, culture collision because that was the only one that I wasn't as crazy about. And yeah, so hey, good that luck. was my decision on that. Can you fit the tickets in your Zion case? They have to go long ways. That's fine. The That's only one that won't fit is the 2019 Clemson football national championship, but I can lay this on top and have the foam kind of press it. So like it still absorbs, it still fits in the case and I can lock it. So that's, that might be another reason why, you know, it hasn't caught on as much. It's not as convenient. Portability. Of course. You know, portability. 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 Yeah, sure. yeah. But uh, yeah, I have two more ticket pickups. Where do you want to go with this? Do you want to, do you want to bounce back? You have yeah, a, I'll, I'll, I'll chime in here. Full steam okay. ahead. You know, I am officially booked for national hotel flight done. Boom. We're ready to rock. <laughs> so what did I do the last, last two years? I had such a great strategy. You were mm -hmm. there for it. A bunch of, you know, two to five hundred dollar soccer cards. Yep. Try to use a handful of those and trade up into a big soccer card. Yeah. So far, so far it's worked. Which you did um, with the blue, the blue Mbappe, right? Color match. Exactly. And I'm I'm really starting to build up a nice collection of that type of stuff. Stuff. And even if I don't move it, it's just what I like, right? So here's mm -hmm. what I found a, a nice pair on Facebook. Harry Kane. 2022 finest red refractor out of five PSA 10. Okay. And a Killian Mbappe tops Chrome from this year. Gold refractor out of 50 PSA 10. That's now, cool. I like that a lot. And the Mbappe pairs really nice with the Holland that I got. Same card. Wow. What are the pop counts on those PSA 10 golds out of 50? They're both around 10. That's nice, bro. So I picked them up. Really just nice looking cards. True gold. The red pops because it's the whole background. So I picked up that pair for 350 I try to balance myself out in this hobby when possible. I felt comfortable buying that pair because I had four eBay auctions ending. Oh. Now, as experienced as hobby members we are, here I am ending four eBay auctions the Sunday night of Super Bowl. Oh, Yeah. I did not think that one through, but it ended up coming out all right. 
Dude, this card, random dual autograph, Pat Burrell and Chad Hermanson. Bought for 10, graded for 25, sold for four dollars. <laughs> 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 Bro, I thought you were gonna say at least fifty. No, oh this, it's God. not all wins. It's not all wins. Uh, yeah. This this Derek Rose gold disco prism out of ten. It's listen. I know it's Rose and Knicks, but it's the Fugazi gold. You know, PSA nine out of ten. Bought for fifty, graded for twenty five, and sold it for fifty one. Okay. <laughs> But then it got better. Then it got better. The uh, okay. Okay. the black prism I got from Culture Collision. Remember, I picked this up for forty. Yep. That sold on eBay for one twenty five. That's great. And this now are these are these are these auctions? These are all auctions. bids. Seven all day bids. auctions. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. So I ran them okay. for seven days last week, not thinking of you know the Super Bowl Sunday. So right. And this last one here's a cool thing to it is uh, Jawan Howard. Atomic refractor from ninety six Bowman's best. This was a five dollar purchase. Mm -hmm. graded for 25 mm -hmm. sold for 155 on ebay to nat turner wow how about that nat turner uh president of psa bought that for me that is very interesting you know what right. is kind of funny that he could have just hit you up on the gram could have hit me in the gram but but it's better this way i'm surprised that the, that's interesting that the president of psa would buy a 150 dollar jawan howard <laughs> He's Sorry. into he's very into '90s basketball type stuff, and this is a pop yeah. three. So the Atomics early on very tough to gem. Well, and with that '96, I mean, I don't know anything about that set, but with the '96 draft class, you'd have to imagine that's an iconic refractor set, like you know Kobe and Steve Nash and Marbury. For sure. Yeah. And when I look at what those I netted after those four cards, two hundred ninety three dollars. Keep in mind, I just bought that pair for three fifty, so more or less, let's call that a wash. Wow, get what I'm saying? That's yeah. That's, uh, that's what we call hobby math. So you basically now did you profit or did you just break even? On the see, the good way to look at it. So the four cards I did profit on. Okay, a decent enough amount. So take that profit and that consider that to be basically a discount into that pair I got for three fifty. That's yeah. how that's how my brain works. That's that's a good way to look at it, because if you make it a positive, I mean, you could say you could take each individual loss on a card like your your four dollar sale and you could like take that to heart. You know, you could get discouraged on that or you could take it like how you're taking and factor in the recent wins to offset the losses. That'll make it much less bitter of a taste in your mouth, you know, to look at it that way. Yeah. And I'm doing the math real quick. OK. Because I, I love well, doing math. I do it for while, a living. While you do that math, let me not pay any disrespect to the 96 NBA draft class. Allen Iverson, number one. Marcus Camby. Sharif Abdurrahim. Stephon Marbury. Ray Allen. Antoine Walker. You go down a little bit. Kerry Kittles. Eric Dampier. Kobe. Peja Stojakovic. Steve Nash. Jermaine O'Neal. I mean, you got longtime veterans. And Knicks legend, Othella Harrington. Nice. like that. Uh, I... I netted ninety-eight dollars and thirty-one cents profit on those four cards. Let's call it a hundred dollars. So that's how I, that's how I look at like the from a totality standpoint of my collection. Like, all right, now I've got these cool two really cool soccer cards that I like. I still track the cards at what I paid for them, but that's how I could look at it. Mm -hmm. Hundred dollars profit one day that goes into an investment. We'll see what happens. So that's a nice Tony Gwynn off of that PSA submission. What would you change? Because to me, if I'm looking at that about like the moves that you made, would you change anything in that deal? I'm just curious. I definitely wouldn't list cards ending on Super Bowl Sunday. That was okay. a bad idea. Yeah, because not a lot of eyeballs on them, right? I mean, yeah, and just absolutely no reason to grade this card. That all. was that was what I was gonna say. Why did no you grade, to grade this? Card. Why why did you grade the dual auto that was already a cheapie? All right, I think <laughs> I had a, a small grading submission going out, and I. There were nine cards in the submission. I'm like, let me just throw one in there for an even 10. Make it, okay. make it worth my while. Okay. I mean, that's no, fun. No, fun no, to, there's no, there was no rhyme or reason to it. It's, But not everything needs a, a reason. Like, that's just kind of like fun, you know, sure. whatever happens. Yeah. So that's an important point, too, that not, you know. I mean, I know a lot of people listening and watching know that. But it's just like, it's as long as it's a hobby, you can take something serious, not serious, whatever you want to do. And, and makes your hobby journey fun. So 
Yeah, at least I got to watch. I was at a friend, hobby friend's house yesterday for the Super Bowl. So it was okay. me and three buddies. We're all card people in the community. Shout out Tom, who's 973 Collectibles, Steve, Pro Send Cards, and Jeremy, Downtown Soccer Cards. We were all kicking it together last night. So I got to watch my auctions with them, which is fun. And my right. friend Jeremy's apartment is right across the street. I did not even realize it from Fanatics HQ, where I will be in a couple of weeks with my card club on a field trip. So just the world's colliding. Yes, that's great. And that's, that's going to be... Uh... A fun, you know, I know we talked about this in Atlanta about, um, you know, future plans for episodes and stuff like that. Brainstorming. That is going to be so much fun to hear about your kids going to fanatics and, uh, you know, the other future stuff that you have planned. That's going to be that's going to be I'll great. Be, I'll, be, I'll be taking mental notes. OK, bro. Talk to me. Talk to check, me. check this out. OK. We were just in the ATL, obviously, if you uh, watched our vlog on the Crosstown Cardboard YouTube. Let me get your thoughts, Craig, because, you know, I like to take time. You know, we we have only ever done this once before together at the National for those vlogs, you know, miking each other up, having the video, you know, it's kind of silly. I mean, we're just, you know, not making anything serious, but just for people's enjoyment and to show them, you know, cool people in the hobby and the event. And I like, you know, going back and using the skills at my job to use them for sports card content, you know, editing together, music, interviews, stuff like that, you know, kind of like how you use your math in the financial breakdown episode of, uh, you know, how much you spent, how much you bought on uh, cards this past year. So what was your uh, impression of the vlog to see that one? I loved it. I thought it was very entertaining. When I watched it through the first time, I had the thought that there wasn't that much nitty gritty details of the cards we were getting and selling and trading and the specifics there were some but then when i realized it like that's you can only show so much of that right a fun vlog wouldn't just be here's this card that we bought here's this card that we sold here's this trade that we made and just that over and over again so i think you did a good job at showing the whole scope of the show and not just the show but the experience in atlanta mm -hmm. yeah I, I think you're right because now that i look at it from the outside because we were just making it, you know, how we thought our experience was and videotaping some of the things that we had fun with. But I think that's the thing that hopefully comes through is like the business parts were fun of it and picking up, you know, collection cards was a lot of fun. And it was also just the experience of being there much more than like the deal oriented ones that are also fun. You know, I like to see negotiations and deals and that's fun too. But, um, Hopefully the personal side of, you know, the people of the hobby kind of came through people and, the, the uh, and the, yeah, and the setting of the hobby, you know, there. So uh, that leads me into this ticket that I picked up because it's relating to Atlanta. It's relating to the ATL basketball arena where we were. And this ticket was from the 2003 NBA All-Star game, which was. Michael Jordan's final all-star game. So I just thought this was so cool. Again, you know, these ticket prices, I think this one, what did I get this one for? Uh, 250 or 300? I think 250. It was, uh, I think that's what it was. I'll have to go back and relook at it. But um, so now I have two of Michael Jordan's last career moments. I have the ticket also from 2003 with the Wizards, of course. His last game at Madison Square Garden. This is the highest graded ticket of this in a PSA 6. And then his last All-Star game from 2003 with what a cool ticket design yeah, of Dominique cool. Wilkins. I mean, that is sweet with the yellow and the red Atlanta Hawks colors. If you're watching on the YouTube, you can see that too. And let me scan this label. I have to, it's a PSA 8. And let me see how many are in the pop. I, the, I like uh, the uh, the Jordan MSG one a lot. Bro, I was showing this to my mom. I was like, how New York is this ticket design? Yeah, I need that. <laughs> you got the taxi cab. You got the Empire State Building. You got the traffic light. You got people playing street ball. You got Madison Square Garden at the center of the ticket. You got a, a, a storage truck, you know, delivering something in the hustle and bustle of the city. You got a subway station. I mean, I went to the game last Wednesday with my dad. Uh, they played the Grizzlies. 
calm yeah. win, calm win, and just being out on Seventh Ave and thirty fourth, thirty third, right before a game. There's no oh my god the uh, the rush to buzz, <laughs> right? Do you, what do you think about the Bogdanovich pickup? Amazing, amazing. Oh my god, the Knicks front office is like competent. Yeah, I didn't have any Quentin Grimes cards. I didn't have any R.J. Barrett, Emmanuel Quickly cards. Like again, I hate to say I told you so, Carmine, but there's a reason I didn't invest in these guys. Yeah. You got to invest in the pillars of the program and those guys. Well, nice. A, that is a, that is such a good way to think about it. The way I collect Knicks, the pillars of the program. I love that. Thanks, I'm bro. Think about that. Yep. I'm writing, I'm writing sports stories all day long. Sometimes something good comes out. So this is a pop five. The uh, Michael Jordan final NBA All-Star game that he played in ticket, which, by the way, Kevin Garnett, we were talking about him earlier with the Vince Carter dunk. He was the MVP of this game. I think he had 39 points and the West beat the East 155 to 145 double overtime. In the All-Star game, I don't remember this, but it must have been electric. In the in the very end when they actually try, you know, in the last two minutes, but um so pop five on this PSA eight, only three higher of this ticket. So yeah, uh, that's awesome. And it says it on the label what you want it to say, right? Michael Jordan last all star game. And that's a that's a key part. I cannot, you know, since you said that so many episodes ago, way before I was even thinking about getting into tickets, I have really realized that in my own ticket purchasing journey is the label is key. And I'll try to get it so you can see it here on the YouTube. Michael Jordan last all-star game. And then above it, it says the score. And then above that, it says 2003 NBA all-star game. So the labeling of the story of that game is key, not just the result. And that brings me, Craig, to another ticket, if I may, because I, I feel like I'm on a roll. Um, and just hopefully this is worth the price of admission, you know, me talking about these tickets. Nice. <laughs> so... Check this one out. This, yeah, I love this, that. That's cool. Bro, okay, let, I'm really interested to hear what you think because, you know, we both, you have the Muhammad Ali Hemet's rookie, and now I have a piece of Muhammad Ali history. It's the 1965 heavyweight championship fight ticket to the second title for Muhammad Ali. So, he won it over Sonny Liston in 1964. He was a seven to one underdog against Sonny Liston. I did I did a lot of like sports research to before getting this ticket because I wanted to feel like I had a good grasp on the story before investing into it and knowing if this was the right Muhammad Ali ticket to buy. So I did some research. It was really cool. Went down a rabbit hole of sports history. So Muhammad Ali beats Sonny Liston seven to one upset in 1964 to win the heavyweight championship for the first time. Then he's about to fight him in a rematch. He had some type of emergency. So they had to postpone the fight like another six months. So during that time between the first fight and the second fight changes his name from Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali. Very controversial, you know, with the, the group he joined. I don't, remember the exact name, but kind of an extremist group and, you know, just the political landscape at the time, the racial tensions, then the Vietnam war, you know, coming up. I can't imagine living through that. I mean, what a tumultuous time in American history. And through it all, you got this brash guy who's just, you know, changing his name. He's doing whatever, you know, he felt was right. So anyway, during all that, he is now, you know, trying to really prove himself 1965 and defend his title against the guy he upset and make it not a fluke, really cement himself. So I got this ticket because he was able to do it, but the way he did it was also controversial because he hit Sonny Liston in the first round with the what's called the phantom punch because he was kind of stepping back. It didn't quite look like he had a lot of power behind it, but you know, tough to tell if you hit somebody in the right spot because people thought that Sonny Liston took a dive and threw the fight you know, for either money or because his life was on the line from the group that Ali was part of and that they would have a hit out on him if he, uh, if he, if he won. I mean, so there's a lot of conspiracy theories around this phantom punch. So you have Muhammad Ali's first fight as Muhammad Ali, which is what this was. 
So you got that history. You got the phantom punch controversy. You got Ali cementing himself as a heavyweight champ by proving that the first one wasn't a fluke over Sonny Liston. And you got an iconic photo as well of Ali pumping his fist, looking down at Sonny Liston. And it might be the most well-known photo of Ali, you know, out there or definitely in the top uh, few, you know, just standing at the center of the ring. And this is a PSA 8. And this ticket, bro, from 1965, 60 years ago, looks like you, you could have handed this to me from the box office. It's in very good shape. That's that's impressive. I don't imagine there's one higher than that. Yeah, there are. No, there's quite a few. Um, really? It's it's surprising because, you know, that's another interesting part, too, is, is is like people know that they're witnessing history at the time. You have to figure. I mean, a heavyweight championship fight. This guy is the most polarizing, you know, thing in sports and in probably American pop culture at the time. So this is a pop 46 with 18 higher. Still very low. And right. It's the image on it for me. It's the very image. Cool. And it says, you know, uh, a 15 round heavyweight boxing match for the championship of the world. Not the world championship. That's not how they talked back in 65. The championship of the world. They want to really make it draw, uh, dramatic and drawn out for you. Where'd you so find that? I found this on eBay. Nice. Because I was, I, I'm just like educating myself through talking to these guys on Instagram about their ticket collection and their, you know, thoughts behind it. And then I'm doing my own research on eBay, just going through like what these mega ticket sales accounts have on their page. Just looking if I think that's cool, you know, where's their style at? And so I'm getting my book smarts education from eBay, you know, just kind of doing my own research. And then I'm getting my street smarts from talking to it or talking to people on Instagram about it. So kind of a dual education at the same time. But um, so pretty cool. Stan oh, yeah. So there's there's three different colors on this ticket just to give you a, a final thought on it. So there's the standing room only, which I got for, which was fifty dollars at the time. There's arena seating, that's a blue version, that's twenty five dollars, and then there's like I don't know ring seating or you know like close seating for a uh, hundred dollars. It was a gold, the gold Bargain. variation. Bargain. Ticket yeah. prices that is. Ooh, that's big money back then. A hundred dollars for yeah. I mean, right? We we paid forty five dollars to see Luca score seventy three, and this is fifty dollars for the heavyweight championship 60 years earlier it's a good get i like that i like uh you're spreading out the culture of your tickets as well i'm trying to collide it bro that's all nice culture collision i had a mail day from australia okay down under <laughs> nice you ever get a card that you love so much that you needed not one not two but you needed three copies you needed not wanted oh. needed three copies of that card oh boy so here we are well frazier bernard king 0607 SP game used, dual patch, autograph. They're all unique in their own way. Different patches, different signatures. I am going to crack the two slabbed ones, just have them all nice and one touches because I don't need a BGS 8 with a 9 auto and I don't need a PSA 6.5. So I'm going to crack right. both of them. If they were 9s, would you keep them in the holder? I would think about it, but it wouldn't be a sure thing. I just okay. I, want, I want to be able to hold them off like – Honestly, like when, I wait, when I wait to post these on Instagram, I'm not going to post them like this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. there's, a good, yeah. there's a good story to it. So I got it from Australia. We've talked about making deals internationally here. And what I hope our next guest is going to be an international guest speaking of. Yes. We need to make that happen. Yes. Um, I made deals with people from Poland, uh, South Korea, China, never Australia. But somebody tagged me in this card. I think it was prolific. I think it was prolific. He's, he, he's always the plug for Nick's stuff. Mm -hmm. Much more the plug than uh, plug in the Valley. Yeah, uh, you know, one of our first team all culture collision. Yeah. Members. But I got a great price on that card. And it was from an NBA cards market. Australia is like the name of the Facebook group. So specifically Australia buy buy, sell trade. But that was a good price. You know, you pay a little extra for shipping, whatever. I get it. It come, yeah. comes from across the world. Pretty impressive. 17 days from Australia to New York City. That's not bad. Yeah. That's, the mail system is unbelievable. But on the post was also this card that I knew my friend Al. Al is NYC Hoops Collector on Instagram. 
great buddy of mine. See him all the time. How we met story at this like thrift shop is a, is a great story story for another day. He's the one that drove me to Atlanta City National a couple of years ago. So like a real true friend in the hobby. Yep. He's a big Ron Artest collector. So I noticed on the same post as the Frazier Bernard King dual patch autograph was this card. A Kobe. Wow. Ron Artest, Meta World Peace, I should say, dual game worn patch autograph. Wow. That is so, sweet. So Al was able to close the deal with the same guy. And instead of paying shipping twice, he just threw the Kobe and Ron Artest in with my package and shipped them both to me. Wow. So <laughs> Al was great. So this this past um, Saturday, Al was in the city with his wife. They were at a restaurant on 84th and 3rd. I live on 73rd and 1st. So I walked 10 blocks, blocks up to Al. We exchanged cards. I also purchased a card from him. So I gave him his Ron Artest Colby dual patch autograph. He handed me a card I had bought from Al himself. We chopped it up for five minutes and just like, you know, New York City hobby connections. There's nothing better. That's hilarious. And what a way for a nice romantic evening with a wife than to have a young, handsome devil hand your husband a card and say, yeah. here, honey. <laughs> well, he gave me a card back. And the card back is actually a very interesting one. Okay. 2004 Upper Deck Reflections. Eli Manning. RPA. Rookie patch autograph out of 21. You can see the stitching on the patch. This is a super rare card. You're not okay. going to find another one of these. This hasn't sold in about seven years. Wow. Okay. Why is it numbered to 21? Probably because the jersey that it came from, which was from the rookie premiere photo shoot. Rookies, we make an exception. Okay. <laughs> right. There are probably only so many patches they could make from that jersey. Oh, okay. So they were like, they were aiming for 25, but they got caught up. I guess so. So it's an Eli RPA. It's just a cool card. I like the card itself. Does it also help that Eli is popular in my market? Sure. So yeah. that was that was the ending to my story with Al. Just from Australia to my hands to his. That's great. Yeah. That is such a great like depiction of the friendliness and the casual nature of the hobby. Yeah, it's great stuff. That's it. now. Why did you need a third? Why did you need a third of the of the Clyde and King? dual uh patch auto i mean well, it was that actually, is just, there's only 25 of them and now you own 12 percent of the market it's just for me for what i like and what i collect it's the perfect card <laughs> that's it there's nothing more to it and I, the price was too right on it i could i couldn't not like okay. this one this one i think i traded into for like four or five hundred two okay. three years ago this one I bought outright or a few months back for 300 and I got this one from Australia for 200 I, could, I couldn't wow. say no. So forgive me for not remembering. Are they sticker autos or on they card? Are, they are. So excuse okay. me when I say perfect card, but you know what? It can't have it all. Something's got to give. Okay. Now, how many patch autos of Clyde and King are there out there? I mean, because that could totally change up if you're going to. I mean, clearly the sticker didn't bother you having it be a sticker auto, but I mean, that would be even more of a reason to be like, you know what, if I want these two guys on one card, you know, that's what it's going to have to be. I don't think I didn't look it up. I can't imagine any other exist. Yeah. I also know at some point I'm going to come across another big Knicks collector. He may have a card. He or she may have a card. I really love. And now I have some trade bait as well. Okay. Okay. This, I, I would like it for a card like this to go to another Knicks collector. Well, great segue, Craig, because I picked up this Knicks card, which you have the same. I mean, speaking of duplicates and triplicates, you have this same card, this Patrick Ewing, flawless 2013-2014 horizontal three-color chunky game-used patch. And you cleverly came up with the name Patch Rick Ewing when you got yours. And now I have one to match yours, same exact card. And you connected me with the guy who I got it from, Mandelbaum Cards. So, I mean, you connected me with the guy who got me the card that you already had. So I now have a matching pair from your assist. I mean, you can't make you can't make up these these stories. Mandelbaum is also the one who I middleman that Wilt Chamberlain, Kobe, Gold Mosaic out of eight. So yes, I think I get two assists in one play. 
You might have gotten a quadruple double. I'm stuffing the stat sheet. Yeah, and that was, I don't mean to shortchange you, but that card was numbered eight out of eight. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, no, that was incredible how that worked out. But talk to me about the Patrick Ewing. You want to get that okay. signed. Okay, yes. So this is an interesting discussion for uh, anybody who's taken the time to watch and listen. We always appreciate, you know, if you want to subscribe, if you want to turn on the notifications, comment, rate, review. We've been getting some some nice interactive comments lately. And I've never done this. I've never submitted a card to be autographed in person. But Mandelbaum Cards was telling me, <laughs> this is kind of funny. He was telling me, he's like, well, you know, there's through voice, guy, through voice message, of course. Oh, this guy's the king of voice messages. Yes. Well, I love it. I appreciate uh, it. Which, which is great. I love, you know, the, I mean, I totally get a feel for what he's saying and, and his thought process way more through the voice notes. Um, and he's, and he's great, but, you know, really worked a good deal. And we shared, you know, about his collecting autograph inscription jerseys like Jalen Brunson and um, different, you know, catchphrases on there on the jerseys and putting them up in the man cave. Really cool. And he was telling me, he's like, hey, you know, listen, bro, I know I would said that if I was going to move this card, I would check with you first. And I was like, wow, that's really thoughtful. You know, he already has a potential buyer and just wants to check with me because he knew how bad I wanted this. He knew you had it. He knew that would be a great match. And he probably just wanted to improve my sports card collecting journey, which he did. And um, he's like, well, I got this guy who's interested. He's thinking of getting this autographed at the next Patrick Ewing signing. And I thought to myself, that is a great idea. <laughs> I should do the like, same thing. Yeah. So I'm like, man, you know, let me steal this guy's idea, basically. And uh, so I quickly, you know, worked out a deal. I got this. And I also got a uh, Akeem Olajuwon flawless um, autograph. But it was a color match. It was numbered out of 15. So it matched with the Houston Rockets jersey. Knew that was going to be a sale. But I picked up a PC card in the process to kind of like you said, offset, you know, some of the cost, make a little profit. And then I'm into the PC collection card for a little bit less, makes it a little more palatable. So I wanted to, <laughs> uh oh, the teacher is being schooled. No, I'm just kidding. So I decided to um, connect with, I think it's uh, Power Sports. I don't know if you've ever heard of this guy. Um, his name's Matt Powers. And he's uh, Powers Sports Memorabilia. So he hosts a lot of these signings. And so not only did our boy Mandelbaum sell me this card, ask if I was still willing to buy it after he had an interested buyer. So coming back to check with me, making a deal with me, he also connected me to the guy who he already knows who can get this signed because he's hosting a signing. Uh, yeah. So you, you, you know what I said about it. I don't know where you would get it signed. I well, I mean, I think I, I kind of, you know, I don't I'm not huge on autographs on the material, on the jersey material. And as we mentioned, this is a big patch. So I initially suggested when we were talking about it, because I'm like trying to brainstorm with you, you know, clearly a close hobby friend. What should I do with this? Where should I place this autograph? And I was thinking the only place is on the knees which is not great. It's not going to be visible. It's kind of going to look sloppy. So I think the only option, bro, is on the patch. As much as I as much as much I dislike in general. Now, if it's on the jersey material, not a patch, it's much more difficult to read the ink if it's just on the cotton piece. Sure. But if it's on a nice, sturdy patch like this, I think with a blue Sharpie on the orange Nix letter or number here, that would probably not look bad. Maybe a thin Sharpie. Thin Sharpie, yeah. Thin blue, thin like navy blue Sharpie. How much or, is or whatever, whatever he blue. He costs a lot, right? He's 300 to get signed? 300 to get this signed. So that, I, I'm I mean, curious. Listen, think about what a Patrick Ewing patch auto costs. And it's more than 300 yeah. plus the cost. And I was, I was sending you some comps of Patrick Ewing patch autos that, you know, come – in the set, not in-person autos. And just to give anybody listening a uh, little view on what this would cost, I'm into the Patrick Ewing for like 210, a right around 200 after the Elijah Wan small profit. 
So I'm into that. Let's just ballpark, say, 200. It costs 300 to get it autographed through this Power Sports memorabilia service. So that's about 500. You got to figure, you know, shipping. I don't know if there's insurance. There might be a, a Beckett certification. That's another $10. So let's just round it 550, let's say, just to be safe. Okay. And if I submit it to PSA to get authenticated, so let's go around 550 total cost all in to get this Patrick Ewing flawless patch autographed in person. Do you think that's worth it? I mean, I know we talked about last episode is traveling to the shows worth it is sending out this Patrick Ewing patch auto or patch to get autoed worth it for 550. I actually do think if you're if it's something you would flip, you would make profit on that. Yeah. But if that's something you want to keep. Are there better Patrick Ewing autographs you can get is my question for you. I'm not saying there is, but you you can. Better. But this is now like a one of one potentially. To... I would I would make sure you would like the way the autograph looks. Well, that's going to be difficult without. I mean, I can just guess. Oh, I, okay, I got it. Sign <laughs> you know it mean? yourself. Sign it yourself. We'll, we'll wash it. <laughs> we'll wash it. We'll use whatever material we need to to take off the ink and just see if okay. you like it. And then it'll be an acid washed New York Knicks jersey. Listen, that's a flawless plan. <laughs> oh. Wow, that's what I'm saying. You, uh, you definitely, you definitely showed out on that one. So I don't know. I feel like you know. Let's say I do go to sell it. Could I ask 800 for it and take 750? I don't Autograph know. Autograph authenticated in the PSA slab, but I, yeah, I would say. But so. at the same time, then it would be, you know, like when I think about what I like 750 for this, I'm like, uh, eh, it's super cool. I mean. If I got this, you know, my first experience sending a card off to be signed, yeah, I've never done that, and getting a PC card that matches, you know, your card, but having it be autographed, the story is so good. It's like it doesn't really like excite me to take seven fifty for that. You know, I was just gonna say between the story, the effort, the thought, the time, just to make maybe a couple hundred bucks, rather own that card. Right. Right. Yeah. And and to commemorate the first time, like taking a chance on something to get signed and kind of commemorates that moment, almost like a ticket. But for me personally, love that. I'm going to run through my last three pickups real quick. OK. Made a nice trade with Dave. Extraordinary cards, a straight up seven for one. No cash involved. I listed the cards. I valued all of them and I picked up a nice Giannis flawless game one patch. That is nice, bro. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Number I think number out of 20 with the silver and the silver slab, whatever. It's an 8-5. It's flawless. It's game worn. It's Giannis. You know this is my type of card right here. Yeah, and that's a big patch, and that silver really pops. Only question, you know I'm going to ask it. BGS 8-5 didn't bother you? No, because I actually like the silver Beckett slab with the silver parallel. I think that looks super cool. Interesting. The intangibles of the hobby. Boom. There you go. You're going to love this one. I don't know if you've seen this one. Okay. 0304 Upper Deck Exquisite Basketball. Uh-oh. A Stefan Marbury. Just the base. I did see you got that. That's a cool card, though. This is sweet, dude. Numbered out of 225. Yeah, that's I a great I have such design. a vivid memory of being in the NBA store in New York City, the old location, in 2003. And I swear to God, they had the Upper Deck Exquisite. They, were sell they sold cards there, and they had a box. I, rem I, I remember seeing the $500 price tag. That's what they valued at. Wow. Uh, I didn't know. That's awesome that the NBA store sold. Uh, yeah. They got to start, right? start doing that again. They should do that in like Nike, Adidas. That'd be cool partnership. Yeah. I used to, my sister was an actress, I've told you. So I would go to the city a lot. That's where my card collecting really started. Speaking of New <laughs> York City and basketball. Okay. This car, this might be my coolest pickup in the last two weeks. Okay. 90, 90s inserts parallels it's really not our game but you understand them the pmgs the star rubies stuff like that yeah so this was. are you familiar with the essential credentials from yes Sky, Sky I, I know that's a i know that's a big set i know that's a big set so i got this from alex's mvp 10 minute walk from me my local shop do you know felipe lopez i've heard isn't he a new york city legend new york city legend okay grew up in brooklyn went to Maybe not Brooklyn. I hope I didn't get that wrong. Grew up in New York City. Went to St. John's. 
So rare card. Isn't there a documentary on him? Yeah, the there, Dominican. There's, there's documentaries out there. Like he, what, what um, nationality is he? Dominican. So the documentary, Dominican. Is the Dominican dream. Grew yeah. up in New York City. There's a heavy Dominican influence in New York City. I see that amongst my students and the staff at my school. Right. So he must have been a hero, like a real hero I, for the from Dominican. From what I saw, I know there's a documentary out there. People were flying the Dominican flag at his games. Yeah. And like, he was like up on the, I saw a great photo of him, like up on the basket, like everybody's cheering for him. Like, man, he was a Dominican icon. Yeah, this, but, this is not the type of card you expect to find at your LCS because it's pretty sought after, I would say, for 90s collectors. But this right. is the 98 Skybox EX, essential credentials now. First of all, the old school Vancouver Grizzlies uniform is so, oh. so sweet. Yes. And this is card number 80 in the set, which means it is also, I don't know if you can see that. It's a little faint, but also numbered out of 80. There it is. Wow. And rookie, is that a rookie card? Sorry, I, don't, I don't know if you mentioned this. Is that a rookie? It is a rookie, yes. Wow. How cool is that? Just so sweet. The color That's very the cool to any like New York City hoops historian. So I thought that was sweet. So yeah, a nice uh nice nice assortment of cards that we've gathered in the last two weeks here. And what did that Felipe Lopez run you? There was an SGC nine sale that did 90. They had it priced at 75, but you know, I'm I'm a guy there. It's like those are my people. So they hooked it up for 55. Oh, nice. And a PSA 8. Okay, that's cool. Really cool. But those in any grade, I mean, they can't really pop up very often, like you right. said. Yeah, there's none listed. So I was really, really happy to own this. Yeah. No, that's super cool. Super cool. I'm glad we got to uh, chop it up. And, and you know, the most fun part is that we hardly ever know what the other person's moves were, you know, like going into the episode. I mean, we might know a few. But I love the surprising, like, you know, conversation we can have right off the uh, top of the dome when we don't really know like, what's coming next. Yeah. A couple but, shout uh, outs. A couple shout outs. Okay. okay yes. Uh, Bleaker Trading is opening a second shop in LA in Santa Monica. Prime Ooh. time location. Oh, have you been to Santa Monica before? Yeah, it's, it's awesome there. Oh, my gosh. Beautiful. Love it. So Bleaker, Bleaker LA, Bleaker Trading LA, whatever they're calling it. Second location. Hopefully there's more in the future. Also got to shout out the cousins for putting yeah. in over 150 straight episodes. Even though they're the podcast is taking a break, they're still here and active and doing their thing. And they've supported us since day one. So got to shout out to our guys, Tony and Oz. Yes. And they're, you know, real life friends as well yeah. after, you know, us going to the national with them and, you know, being on uh, each other's podcasts and stuff like that and being in the group chat. And I got to be honest, when they – put out their last episode of the cousins collectibles podcast, or at least the last for now, they might be a little Brett Favre of action. They might come back, but uh, my heart dropped when they said it was their last episode. I'm like, what the heck? You know, yep. I mean, I know they're doing it like, you know, for what they need to do. And I totally respect that. I was just like, man, that's my, you know, one of my favorite podcasts, if not my favorite podcast to listen to. And, uh, you know, no more sports card therapist podcast, no more cousins collectibles podcast. Those are two of my, you know, bullets in the chamber every week. Thank goodness we saw the sports card lessons podcast with Big Ken. Uh, but you know, let's do we're, that. Here. we're here. Yeah, we're still here. I mean, and uh, and what they were saying made sense as far as them having to hang it up or choosing to hang it up because they weren't making as many moves. I mean, they're much more like full on collector collectors. Like we're like collecting and flipping to fund, you know, personal stuff or to fund more hobby stuff and have fun with the financial area too. So we have, you know, quite a few more moves. And so I, I, I totally understood what they were talking about, but uh, I have to give my guys a call. I haven't talked to them yet. Cause that episode just came out, but but it's all right. As, uh, listen, as far as cross on cardboard, as Lupe Fiasco says, the show goes on. Uh, I thought you were going to say kick push, but yours was better. Well, we are also kicking and pushing our way to national. So let's do this. Let's do it, bro. And we have plenty more to talk about already for the next episode. So we'll just keep uh, trying to rock the mic. Let's go, Knicks.
Peace.